Our second scripture lesson for today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. And as I read this to you, listen for God speaking to each and every one of you. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. This is the word of the Lord. When I was growing up as a child, my mother told me that she wanted me to grow up knowing culture, good culture. And so she, uh, instead of taking me to to movies, she would take me to plays. And one of my favorite plays ever since I saw it as a small child was Les Miserables. So has anyone here read the book, Victor Hugo's classic? Has anyone here read it? Or has anyone seen the plays? They've come out with a few movies. It's a great story. And it's an epic, and it follows the life of Jean Valjean. And when the story begins, Jean Valjean is not in a good place. He's in prison for stealing a loaf of bread, and after some time, he's released on parole. But at his time and his place, those who were on parole, they didn't have much of a life afterwards. And so he tried to find a job, but no one would give him one because he was a criminal. He tried to find a place to live, but... He couldn't find a place to live because he didn't have a job because he was a criminal. So eventually, Jean Valjean became a vagabond. He was wandering around. He was homeless, eventually getting back into crime until he gets to this place where he goes to a convent and this bishop takes him in and they bathe him and they clothe him and they give him a place to sleep. And for those who know the story, how does Jean Valjean repay that generosity? Yeah, he tries to steal all of the silver. And so as he's making his way out with all of this stuff that he stole, again, he gets caught by the police. And so they arrest him and they take him back to the bishop. And they say, look, here is this criminal. Is this your stuff that he has stolen? And the bishop If he was a just man, he would have confirmed that. He would have said, yes, this is all of our property that this man has stolen. But he doesn't do that, does he? No. He tells the police, no, this was a gift that I gave him. In fact, he forgot one thing, and the bishop turns around, and he grabs these two giant silver candlesticks and said, you forgot your candlesticks. So the police, they had no option but to let him go. And so it's at this point in the story that Jean Valjean was completely and utterly dependent on the mercy of the bishop. Now, I don't know any of you here well enough to to know that if you've ever experienced that moment where you're trying to get out of prison, but I'm sure that all of us here are familiar with that experience in our lives where we have been brought to our lowest and maybe it's because of our own doing and we are in need of mercy. Maybe we're at this place or we have been at this place where our actions should have brought about consequences that would do us in, but instead of that we get a reprieve and we are allowed to start over. We were shown mercy. Often when we look at the Beatitudes, we we start in verse 1 and we shoot down to verse 10 and maybe we look at it as a whole. And sometimes we go through it so fast that we forget to slow down and take a look 
at what Jesus is actually saying in every single verse in this passage. Because if we rush through, we miss some of it in the middle. Where Jesus says, Blessed are those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. So today, perhaps in true Floridian fashion, we are going to slow things down and get, get at a slower pace and take a look at this verse where Jesus says, Blessed are those who are shown or who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. We're going to see how mercy is at the very foundation of our own relationship with God, and that then gives us the ability to go out and be merciful to others. But before we get to that, let's be honest with ourselves for just a minute. Because I think if we were all honest with ourselves for just a minute, we would admit that as easy as it is to receive mercy at times, sometimes it's hard to show mercy. And I think it's hard for a couple reasons. And the first reason is that at its very core, to show someone mercy is to give them something that they have not earned for themselves. As Americans, we live in a land where if you want something, you need to work for it and earn it. So we, we have our careers where we made a wage, we made a living so that we could build the life that we wanted. And I know many of us here have worked really hard to build that life. We have earned that life. Some of us here may look at exercise in the same way. If we want to have a good body, if we want to be physically healthy, then we have to put the work in to be healthy. So whether it's working for a living or working for a healthy body, it all goes back to this idea that if we want something, we have to work hard for it. So those that want something must work hard, and if someone doesn't work hard, then they will not get what they earn. But mercy, mercy flies in the face of all of that. When I think of someone who needs mercy, I think of that person that I saw when I was flying down here to Florida in the TSA line, that dreaded TSA line. For those of us who aren't lucky enough to do pre-check, we get to stand in line for a long time. And, and so I was standing in line for a good half hour and someone comes running in and they're late for their flight. And they're desperate, and you can see that if they were to stand in line with the rest of us, they wouldn't make their flight. And so the TSA people mercifully let them in the front of the line. They didn't earn that place in line like the rest of us. The rest of us were following the rules. The rest of us were doing what we were supposed to do. We showed up early. We made the arrangements so that we could stand in line. We earned our spot in that line. But this person who came in late... They didn't earn it. They needed mercy. Who hasn't been in a situation like that? We've all struggled. But it's hard because showing mercy is giving someone something that they haven't earned. And especially as Americans, that can be really tough sometimes. The second reason why showing mercy is tough is because it makes us vulnerable. Showing someone mercy will always be risky. There will always be that risk that the mercy that we show won't pay off, that we won't see this awesome transformation. In fact, there's always a risk that when we show someone mercy, that they will take advantage of it, and they will take advantage of us. And there will also be times when showing someone mercy could put us in danger. So our safety can be at risk if we show people mercy. And so because mercy is something that is unearned and because mercy makes us vulnerable, it's a hard thing for us to do sometimes and to think about. It makes us uncomfortable because it doesn't fit in with our lives out in the world. But Jesus didn't say, blessed are those who are merciful when it works out for them. He didn't say, blessed are those who are merciful when they have earned it. 
No, Jesus said, blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Mercy, it's foundational to our relationship with God. If we look in the psalm that we read today, we see these characteristics of God and we see he's, he's merciful to us. He's slow to anger. God's love abounds. Let us never underestimate those characteristics of God because that is God showing us mercy because we don't deserve a single bit of that on our own. If we did not have God's mercy, God has every right to turn his back on us. He has every right to be angry with us. He has every right to give us exactly what we deserve, but he doesn't. He chooses to be merciful. We see this throughout Scripture. It's this repeating, never-ending story of God's mercy. God was merciful to the people of Israel, even after they rebelled again and again and again. God's mercy was shown no greater than the giving of his son, Jesus Christ, to come down and reveal his love for us, to reveal his way for us. Even though by the time that Jesus had come, we had messed things up so much that, that he needed to send his son to reveal his way for us. And, and God has given us his spirit. After Jesus was risen from the dead and ascended to heaven, he knew that we would again mess things up. And so he sent us his spirit, his very own presence for each and every one of us to be guided, to be loved, to be comforted, to be supported. Because we need it. We need God's mercy. Just like Jean Valjean needed that bishop's mercy to make it. We are in desperate need of God's mercy. And that's why mercy has to be at the core of our foundation of our relationship with God. And as we start to think about that, as we start to embrace it, we can then get to the second part. Blessed are those who are merciful, for they will receive mercy. Because if we do embrace God's mercy for us, that's when we can begin to embrace God's command for us to be merciful to others. And the reason that we can do that is because we won't ever have to do anything greater than what God has done for us. There is no greater mercy than a God who is perfect and demands nothing less than perfection if he wanted to be just to show that kind of mercy to say, you know what, you, you people, my people, my children, you have messed things up, but I love you so much that I'm going to do what it takes for us to be in a relationship. That is a mercy that cannot be matched. So as we are put into situations where we can show mercy and it may scare us, let's remember the mercy that God has shown us. Because if God can do it, surely we can do it, right? And when we are merciful, we will receive mercy. Christ tells us that. He tells us that in this Sermon on the Mount. And I remember when I was a child and I, and I read this, I thought that what he was saying is that if we're merciful to others, then we're going to receive mercy like it's this cosmic transaction, almost. Like that God is sitting up there and he has this big pad of paper and, and he's saying, well, this person and this person are merciful. And so you know what? I'm going to show them a little bit more mercy. And then this person and this person, they're not as merciful, so they won't get less mercy. That's what I thought growing up. But the more that I have learned about the character of God and the more that I have studied Scripture and the more that I have embraced this God who loves us and shows us mercy no matter what, I, I've begun to think of it in another way. I think what Jesus is saying here is that if we all show mercy to others, it's inevitable then that someone 
will show mercy to us. Mercy begets mercy. In the story of Les Miserables, the bishop, he lets Jean Valjean go, but he just doesn't let him go without giving him a command. He said, take these silver sticks that I have given you and use them to go out and build an honest life for yourself. Don't take this mercy for granted. Do something with it. Make something out of it. That's exactly what he did. Valjean goes out and he makes an honest life for himself, helping people. Eventually, he takes in this little orphan girl, Cosette. And he brings her in, this vulnerable little child. And he shows her mercy and he brings her up as his own daughter. And then when she grows up and, and falls in love with Marius, and Marius is, is going off and he's doing this, some of this crazy rebellion stuff, and he gets himself in trouble, his life is at risk, and Marius should have earned this death because he got himself in with the wrong crowd, but no, Jean, Jean Valjean, he goes out, and he literally saves this young man's life because Cosette loves him, and he brings Marius back so that they he and Cosette could start this life together. And so what we see here is this transformation of Jean Valjean from a hardened criminal to this loving and generous and merciful man. But that never would have happened. None of it ever would have happened. Cosette never would have been saved. Marius never would have been saved if that bishop in the beginning did not choose to show mercy. And so it's because of this bishop's choice to be merciful that we see that mercy begets more mercy. Family, imagine a world where all of us choose grace over holding grudges. Imagine a world where all of us suspend our 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 belief that everyone needs to earn what they get in order that everyone be fed. Imagine a world where we are willing to make ourselves vulnerable for those who are already vulnerable. That's not some fantasy world. That is the kingdom of God. It's the kingdom of God that Christ inaugurated and that Christ validated with the empty tomb. And it's also the kingdom that he invites us to build right here, right now, today. So as we depart from here, as we go from this place, the week after Easter, the tomb is empty. Victory has been won. But we still have a lot of work to do. There's a lot of people out there that need mercy, and it's going to be tough sometimes. Earlier um, this month, we took part in a uh, hunger run where I'm from, and it's something that brought the entire city together. And there were churches, and there were mosques, and there were synagogues, and we all came together to fight hunger in our city. And through it all, we raised about $700,000 to benefit the hungry, those who need food. Now, I don't know where that money is going to go necessarily. I know it goes to the organizations, but I don't know the people personally that, that it's going to benefit. And I don't know if that money and that food will pay off, that it will lead to their own transformation like Jean Valjean. I don't know if there's going to be people out there who take advantage of the money that we give. But you know what? It doesn't matter. Because God calls us to be merciful. And then God take cares, takes care of the rest. Mercy is real work, but that is kingdom work. God's kingdom work. And he encourages all of us each and every one of us, no matter where we are, to participate with him in bringing that kingdom by showing others mercy.
And let us all be merciful so that we can receive mercy when we need it until that day that Christ comes again. But before then, in the meantime, let's bring God's kingdom closer to earth by being merciful. To God be all glory and honor and praise. Amen. Thank you.